Hello, this is Toshi Shimada, music director and conductor of the Eastern Connecticut Symphony Orchestra. We have today a guest soloist for the February 19th concert and a superb saxophone player, Josh Thomas. Welcome, Josh. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, uh, we are quite excited that we're going to wake up, welcome you, and then you're going to stand in the front of the orchestra I and am. start playing the great solo pieces. Uh, so peace for one, and then, then later you joined us in the, in the orchestra I to am. play the saxophone part. That's a lot of work. It's actually. a full full night, for isn't me. it? But you kind of were, uh, uh, what do you say? I mean, used to this kind of schedule, like right, yeah. you were the member of the United States Coast Guard band. Yes, and you play constantly, isn't it, in the concert? Absolutely, and even when I played concertos, I, I maybe take one piece off, but I'm right back in the section after the concerto. Yeah. I'm so delighted you're here in, in uh, Eastern Connecticut <laughs> area. But okay, so the main thing is that we are performing a piece by Kenneth Crooks, who is a professor at the UConn, yes. the music department there. And of course, he's a prolific uh, composer whom uh, uh, I know him personally too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always want to program his piece. So when you... Uh, mentioned about uh, his saxophone concerto called Rush. Yes. Right? Rush. And uh, immediately said, yes, we need to do that. You know, so, and uh, I'm a former quasi saxophone player. Also, Ooh, I played clarinet mainly. Okay. I played a saxophone and jazz band in the high school, but not very accomplished one. I'm a very poor clarinet <laughs> player, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can make that. I don't know. But, uh, so, can you tell me about how you came to this piece and then how the, about anything about the, you like to say to our audience? Oh, sure. Um, so I actually first heard about this piece when it was being commissioned, uh, which I think was about 2012. And I had the opportunity to join the commissioning program at that time, but I actually turned it down because one of my co-workers, Greg Case, who's the saxophone professor at UConn, mm. was part of it. And I just kind of figured we're not gonna play the same concerto twice. Mm. And at that point, it was gonna be a concerto for band and saxophone only. Mm. I believe that was before the orchestral version. So, but I know the commissioner, the original commissioner named Brian Janis. He's a, uh, another military saxophonist in the Air Force and I've known him for many years. But fast forward, uh, probably about four or five years ago, the Coast Guard band, we recorded an entire CD of Kenneth Mm. Kenneth Fuchs music, including Rush, uh, several other full band pieces and a bass trombone concerto. So I became familiar with the piece again at that moment. And recently, in the last couple of years, it was recorded by the London Philharmonic by another wonderful saxophonist named Timothy McAllister. And that was a part of a CD that it also included a piano concerto by Mr. Fuchs. And that uh, recording won a Grammy Award. Mm. So it sort of blew up, at least in the saxophone world, as far as I saw lots of recordings. There was a very high quality recording of it. And a lot of other people in college levels were performing it on recital. So I became more familiar with it then. And uh, I was able to purchase it and start learning it. Mm. And so I have worked uh, not directly with Mr. Fuchs. He was in our rehearsals, but I've played a lot of his music at this point and feel very comfortable with his language. And I really enjoy it. And so that was sort of how it popped in my head of, I had this concerto that I thought would be really nice to play with strings. Great. There's a great orchestra here, so let's see if we can get something going. Absolutely. Uh, I wonder, we should ask this uh, question to Ken actually, but he had the knowledge of the saxophone before he wrote the saxophone. I don't know the answer it's to like that. like a commission, like a Brahms violin concerto, Brahms had a Joachim, who was a violin player, who was <laughs> helping him construct piece and we will ask him okay. the question in rehearsal. It like fits that. really well for the instrument. Yeah, I mean, so. and, and knowing the uh, instrument too, I mean, and the, it's in those two sections basically, yep. right? First section, so gorgeous. So gorgeous. That is a rush. I mean, it's yeah. floating the air and kind of fluid and everything, right? It just seems to me completely at peace. It's, mm. it's, it's entitled e mean is the first section mm. and it just, um, yeah, it just seems calm and someone who's satisfied, mm -hmm. just happy, and yeah. resting. And then it switches to the really exciting. Uh, to morning. Busy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> really, it's a busy morning, I think it is. And, uh, 
really jazzy and yeah. everything. The, so, uh, so all the repertoires that you know in the saxophone, where does this fall into the degree of the difficulties? <laughs> I mean, I'm putting it on the spot. Right well, now. I, you know, honestly, I think this concerto is very playable. Mm. And so from a technical degree of difficulty, I probably put it on the lower end of the spectrum. Okay. You know, mm. uh, I think putting together something, uh, D.E. Bear, Concertino, mm -hmm. much more rhythmically technical, just uh, under your fingers. Which you wish you do someday. Oh, okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm on. Yeah, uh, like Glazunov is, of course, I'm Glazunov, uh, you know, it, it's another, like, kind of piece that just moves around all over the place mm -hmm. and, um, you know, works, uh, Creston Concerto. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, also very technical. So I think this is very playable and very approachable <laughs> by, you know, any good college level player which mm -hmm. i think is really exciting because yeah. saxophone music tends to be so incredibly difficult mm -hmm. every new piece often is one of the hardest pieces ever written mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it's really refreshing to have a piece that uh you know you can put together uh pretty solidly pretty quickly and focus on tone and color yeah. and trying to make something beautiful rather than being kind of sweating bullets about every mm -hmm. technical passage coming up. But I, and I don't want to misconstrue this, like it, it doesn't sound easy or simplified in any way. It's got such layers to the music that it's active. It's always moving. There's always something happening to hold mm -hmm. the listener's interest, I believe. And so I just think it's really well done. I'm quite excited. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I'm just looking at the scores and everything, and it just, it fits so well with orchestra, yeah. the complement. So, uh, another question. Uh, we, you were asked by me to play other orchestra uh, saxophone parts sure. in a different instrument. This uh, rush is for alto saxophone. For alto saxophone. Now, the Prokofiev is you have to switch to tenor saxophone. Yep. You, you play all the saxophones. I play all of the saxophones. Yeah. So, I mean, it's. What is the difference to the lay people? What is the difference you think distinct difference between alto and tenor? Uh, be, besides the size, tenor sure. is larger. Well, yeah, tenor is larger. Um, it inherently has a different tone color. It's as a tenor has a more on the classical side of things a more uh, mellow, uh, darker kind of tone. Mm. Fits really well with the cellos, with the lower bassoons that kind of sound. Most people probably know it from jazz playing and it gets a often a very different kind of sound than what you'll hear hopefully in the orchestra. <laughs> um, from a technical point of view, it's just because it's bigger, it's more air. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's a different kind of air. The fingerings are the same, so yeah. just actually technically playing it is not very different. It's just, it's getting the response that you want. Mm, yeah. So that's really the question of switching from one to the other is is everything going to be ready and responsive mm -hmm. the way we want? Yeah, I played tenor, and it was, I had a great difficulty playing it initially. Yeah. It produced a good sound, really, you know. And uh, I always was mesmerized by a great tenor saxophone. Oh. Player. and you were play wonderfully. I mean, you played us before. You know? I have, yeah. And uh, yeah. so, audience will enjoy uh, Joshua's playing a uh, tenor sax in the Prokofiev's Romeo and Juliet Suite. And then we have a little little piece called Waltz. Yep. Number two by Shostakovich, and uh, that's uh, being used in the, the TV commercials and things. Yeah. It's, it's started becoming very popular, it is, yeah. and there's many different arrangements of that for various different instruments. But I had to have a saxophone version of it. Excellent, it's a choice. And this is an alto sax. It is. Isn't it? It's alto saxophone. Yeah, it's it's very mellow. It is. Uh, it, yeah. It's just a nice melody. Yeah, a nice melody. Yeah. You get to play. Then yeah. you kind of sit back and go come back. Yeah. yeah so. So if you really want to hear a great saxophone play played here, we have a Josh Thomas in our concert February 19th, that Saturday evening, 7.30 at the Guard Arts Center. And I hope many of you uh, join me. But before we go, I'd like you to talk about your personal uh, life, uh, Ooh. about anything that, Ooh, boy. not secret if you want, yeah. but you know, that people would like to know because I think to make, make more personalized your sure. life. Well, I'm uh, originally from Texas, from outside of Dallas. Oh, you're Texan? I'm Texan. Oh, I wow. grew up Texan and lived there for all through high school. Mm -hmm. and, and I went off to school to Michigan State University. Oh, my God. It was great. So uh, that was my first 
venture of basically across the state line into the north and uh, kind of moved around for a few years after that. I went, moved, lived in Louisiana for a year for graduate school wow. and then um, the Coast Guard is what brought me to yeah. this area yeah, and sure. I've been here almost 22 years. Of is that so? It is. Oh my. So it's, I've lived here longer than any place I've lived before. I'm a, now you have a family here. I have a family. I'm a resident of Groton and I have, uh, right. I'm married and I have two children, uh, ninth grade and seventh grade. Are they going to play some instruments? Well, so uh, my daughter, who's in ninth grade, is a saxophonist. Oh, right. She started on cello. I'll just put this out there. She started right. on cello in third grade, mm -hmm. and she was doing really well, and I begged her to stay on cello. Uh, but she really wanted to play saxophone. So oh, it's beautiful. Uh, we started that fourth grade, and she's doing really well on it. She's really active in a lot of things. Yeah. So uh, I don't see her going into music uh, just because she has a lot of interest. And then my son right now is playing percussion, but it's not his favorite thing uh, in the world. Uh -huh. He's uh, he's really into sports, so I okay. think we might be losing the music side yeah, of things yeah. there. But he could want at least. <laughs> but it's it's great. But yeah, that's I, great. It's a. Uh, I grew up in a musical household. My father was my band director. Oh, and my, you're that right. Yeah, and my brothers <laughs> played uh, trumpet and horn, mm. so I was sort of the black sheep of picking the saxophones. So I kind of understand what it's like to have a father or a parent who mm, plays an instrument yeah, and yeah, is yeah. sort of on you. About. Yeah, our son, uh, you know, my wife's a pianist and that comes actually. He decided not to go into music. Yeah. He's like, he's, although he plays piano, he's in the film. Uh, completely different, but Great. still creating. So that yeah. could happen. To yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so wonderful. And your wife, what does she play? My wife, with? so we met actually in music school at Michigan State. She was a clarinet player. Oh, good. But not... Uh, in a way that she wanted to do that for her career. So she's now a paralegal and works for the Mohegan wow. tribe. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. So she works for the Mohegan government, uh, not at the casino, but at the, um, yeah. in their tribal Operation. office. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah, so she has a really interesting job of all of this specialty tribal law yeah. and yeah. a lot of research. And it, it really fits. But she still understands the music. That's great. She, uh, she, yeah. When I have to go practice, yeah. she understands. It. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's great. It's perfect. Wonderful. <laughs> Wow. When I had to buy a mouthpiece, she understood. <laughs> mouthpiece? What kind of mouthpiece do you use? Oh my gosh, I have... You have many. 20, but the one I'm, I use is Selmer mouthpiece. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's... It's the standard. Almost everything that I play on is a Selmer brand. And the reed? Oh, I use Van Dorn's. If any And for those there. people that don't know, that's a yeah. kind of a standard. <laughs> I've, I've used the same brand reed for almost 35 years. Wow. And there's a lot of... It's because that was the only one when I started. Yeah. But now there's a ton of great ones out there yeah, yeah. i'm just sort of setting my ways being a pl I mean, clarinet player i also went through that too you yeah know? and i settled with vandora yeah. also too and, uh, so that's the industry standard i was thinking I, yeah i yeah. think it, it is for most people <laughs> yeah. so well thank you so oh. much for being here and looking forward to our collaboration me too yeah. my pleasure thank you thank you